come from every dot on the globe to see why British Columbia's West Coast Trail has the reputation it does. Unbelievably grueling, unbelievably beautiful. But winter storms have caused so much damage, officials are scrambling to open it by May for the 100th anniversary hiking season. If you don't think you're up for the 77-kilometer challenge, though, don't worry. Mark Kelly tackled it for you before the storms hit, spending seven days on the West Coast Trail. Every once in a while in life, you gotta test your limits. Most of us would choose to go to a place where everything is hard. It's pretty tough, man. Every moment, a decision. Every decision, a failure. Whoa. Or a victory. Yes! You only see obstacles. You only hear your body struggle to go on. You only think. Oh, great. About the end. Oh. This? This is not a good position to be in. I'm going to spend seven days in that place. You smell that? It's the smell of a pulled groin. Ugh. This isn't basic training. Oh no, this is some people's idea of a vacation. It's actually a dumb way to go. Hiking the West Coast Trail. What are we doing here? Like, what are we doing here? It all started in Victoria at 6 a.m. Well, it was supposed to. You see, I was half an hour late and had to flag down the bus, latte in hand. The perfect symbol of how ill-prepared I am. First, a six-hour logging road ride to the trailhead. I kind of feel like puking, so I turn to our guide Gontron for a little pep talk on the hike ahead. So if I make it to the end, this will be a great experience. Oh yeah, it'll be a great experience, irregardless if you make it to the end. Yeah, it's definitely not a guarantee that everyone finishes, so... Was that right? Oh yeah. Not finish? Why wouldn't I finish? Now if you encounter a wolf or a cougar anywhere on the trail, then it's important that you do not run. I guess that's my answer. This orientation session is full of valuable information. Wild animals? Don't run. Tsunami? If the ground shakes or the water recedes, run. Then I notice over her shoulder, it says there have been 26 emergency evacuations in the past few weeks. I wonder if one of us will be number 27. Have you ever done this before? No. Have you? No. Hiked? No. None of you? <laughs> no. Man, I've got weak link written oh, all over shit. me. Especially when I put on my pack. We have to carry everything. Food, clothes, and camping gear. Imagine giving a seven-day piggyback ride... Now that's how it's going to be. ...to a 12-year-old fat kid. Oh, man. How's that feeling? Hefty? I was feeling pretty hefty. <laughs> we flew six hours, we drove six hours, and now we're on the edge of the country right here at the beginning of the West Coast Trail. I have never done anything like this in my life before. And uh, I am nervous, and I don't get nervous for a lot. This time I'm nervous, and I'm already behind. And the people I've got to keep up with? Zena, the German soccer player with six-pack abs. Miriam and Stefan, professional handball players from Switzerland. Shannon, a marathon runner from Vancouver. And Annika, an aerobics instructor from Toronto. Oh, this is brutal. My hips are killing me. My back's killing me. We're probably three kilometers into a 77 kilometer hike. I am so sore. Why is it that when I look around, nobody looks tired but me? That's not good. As I come up the ladder and find the whole group waiting for me, I'm seriously thinking, I cannot do this. Day one. <laughs> Man, this is a great introduction. Yeah. Aren't you glad we're going the easy way first? 
Oh, that's right. This is the easy end of the trail. It only gets tougher right up till day seven. Oh, as we finally make camp, I'm wondering, f off. Why do oh. people do this? Yeah, I'm trying to get beyond the heart. I'm trying to think more philosophically about this, that, you know, it's, we're, we're on the edge of the country right here. We're hanging on by our fingernails to the west coast, and it's so beautiful. There's a moon over my shoulder. There's a whale out there. This is amazing. Ah. Oh. I'm so sore. <laughs> I'm so sore. You know what the best part of backpacking is? Sharing the sound of the surf and a hot cup of joe with my new pals. How's your body feeling today? From okay. yesterday, yeah? yeah. The worst part of backpacking? But I don't want to... I don't want to put the pack back on. I don't yeah. want to put the pack back on. <laughs> the backpack. This is to help soothe sore muscles. <laughs> but I take one for the team and offer to carry the giant jar of honey. How many kilometers today? We're basically doing uh, 14 kilometers. <laughs> if I'm going to get what this adventuring is all about, uh, awesome. I've got to quit whining and step up. <laughs> They call this coastline the graveyard of the Pacific. There's a shipwreck for every kilometer of the trail. While it may feel like a death march, the trail was built a hundred years ago as a lifeline. After a shipwreck and swimming ashore, the survivors had to hike this back to civilization. It kind of puts our blisters into perspective. Wow. Do you think this is changing your perspective? Just realizing that my problems aren't prob problems at all. It's just uh, daily stuff. It's so unimportant at all. Yeah, we all need this. But we don't all get it. Yeah, I'm alive right now. Yeah, me too. How can that be? Well, you know that saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Not only is it true, but I'm enjoying learning it. Hoppala! Yeah! And not even in a Jack Nicholson, Bush Madness, shining kind of way. <laughs> and when we hit camp, I meet a 60-year-old Crown Prosecutor from Ontario who explains why we give up comfort for this. This is so well known around the world and everybody who writes about it is writing about the joy of the challenge. Uh, it's demanding as hell, but every time you come through it, it's just a little more of, yeah, I'm here, I've done this, and I'm part of it now. Yep, I'm part of it too. A survivor. I'm just like the people who hiked this trail a hundred years ago, but with better gear. I got my confidence back today, and uh, what a huge difference that is. That's... Um, in 24 hours is a total turnaround for me. But uh, I don't want to get too cocky about where I am because um, I think there's something waiting for me down there that I, I have no idea what it's going to be. And uh, I just want to be ready for it. You know, it's great to be out here in nature, but nature gets up early like the ravens outside my tent at 6 a.m. Morning. Is it just me, or is this seven-day hike about four days too long? It's definitely just me. I think today, I need to see the trail through other people's eyes, starting with the Swiss. How did it feel when you put your backpacks on? Good. I felt like he was... I was used to him and he was used to me too, so it was good, like, oh, come on, friend, let's go. <laughs> me and my backpack are still feuding while they were in awe over the bald eagle and ogling the seals. It's like they've never seen wildlife before. And apparently the seals have never seen Swiss either. 
looking out and looking at us and thinking, oh, they are so stupid just running by the beach like idiots. Miriam tells me there are so few places in Switzerland where you can walk for days and not run into someone. And then we ran into someone. The Dididat First Nations run a river crossing and crab shack for the hikers. I asked our skipper why he lives here, in the middle of nowhere. Are you serious? Somebody's going to pay you to be out here, eat fresh salmon and crab all the time? You'd say no to that? <laughs> oh, look at this. Now I see his point. Dwayne, you've made my day. <laughs> this is my kind of wildlife steamed and slathered in butter. Stefan, you've never had crab before. I like it very much. <laughs> Our host Dwayne tells a story of how his people settled here because of the salmon, the crab and the splendor of this place. Every time I leave home I get a deeper understanding as to why people say I'm in such paradise. This has been our, my family's home for at least 8,000 years. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they have everything they need in their own backyard. And later on, Zena reminds me, so do I. It's, it's unbelievable. And when we, when we are up on the hill, I love to watch over the ocean to see the waves, or even the fountain. Just the fountain. It make me, yeah. makes me feel like, wow, there's whales. <laughs> just to know they're out there. Yeah, they're just like, wow. <laughs> Your eyes are opening and everything, you're seeing so much. And I find when I'm talking to you, I'm seeing more just by hearing what you're saying. <sighs> now I understand the spirit of the explorer. What keeps you going is always wondering what's around the next corner. Maybe those of us from Tribe Toronto just need to open our eyes to the adventure. <laughs> Day three. We were all slowing down, though. Pace yourself. Except for the Swiss couple. I think they were getting faster as the day went on. I don't know how they do it. Are you having any frustrations on this trip? Face to face Not so with far. The fiercest creature on the West Coast Trail. Was quite as I expected. Day four, I've got it all planned. Today's the day this city boy's going to have his life changed. I want to get more out of it than that, I'm just being able to say I did it. Well, you'll, you'll get Gontron it. tells me we'll be hiking by people who have lived in the middle of nowhere for years. Well, I've busted my butt to get this far. Oh, yeah. Now I want their wisdom. We're doing a documentary about uh, the West Coast Trail. Okay. Just want to know if I could have a quick word with you. Uh... Yeah, I don't really feel like it. You don't really feel like it? No. Jerry and his wife have been lighthouse keepers here for 20 years, with nothing but trees to the one side, water to the other. And they don't want to talk? Oh no, I'm not going anywhere till they tell me why they want to live out here alone. Um, where do you live? Toronto. Downtown oh, Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> We couldn't have more polar opposite existence as you and well, I. Well, I think you probably sort of probably figured it out by now. You've been on the trail for three days. I think it's because it's just so um, unendingly beautiful. Oh. And you're going back to Toronto. All right, okay. Well, <laughs> and it can't be soon enough for her. Because what really bugs Janet are those weekend warriors who don't get it. Stomping through her paradise, only thinking about <laughs> one thing. Burgers, burgers, burgers at Shea Monique. Well, I got to admit, I'm pretty excited to hit this landmark restaurant. Everyone's here for the juicy burgers, but I want wisdom from the crusty owner. Everyone says you're a pretty tough, mm -hmm. tough nut. Mm -hmm. I'm living on land that was never sold or sold. Therefore, this is independent. I'm a rebel. Monique tells me she moved out here with her First Nations husband to reclaim the land, hoping others from the band would follow. But as I'm looking around, I'm thinking, what could anyone possibly get out of this place? When we decided to come home, we wrote down needs and wants. 
The wants were this big. The needs were this big. The true needs. You carry a backpack on your back for a week. You've got everything you need. Mm -hmm. Are your needs that big? I do with less. And, and just being out here is reminding me how much <laughs> I could do with less. Yep. See, that's what bothers me all the time, like this. People say, I own the land. How can you own this? <laughs> Can't. Okay, so it's something about needs and wants. Well, both Janet and Monique told me the trail will teach me everything I need to know if I just open my eyes. But now I need people sit in front of the boob tube with a clicker. Click, 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 click. My TV's right there. This is a better TV than the one in town. I don't even need a clicker. It changes by itself. Hey, Monique, you got a widescreen TV, too. I love it. I started off this day wanting more, and I got it. We load up our packs with fresh food and supplies and head out on a grueling three-hour stretch of sinking in the sand. And that's when the trail gives me my wisdom. Never in my life have I wished more for less. I think that was the hardest. Oh, that, that was tough, hard. Have you been broken? I'm not broken yet, but I was quite close. And I'm feeling bagged and dirty. But we're having fun, right? Totally. Loving it. I'm so glad I did this for my holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dear Mom, it's me, your son Jeff. You know, the cameraman? I'm out shooting a documentary on the West Coast Trail, and boy, are we having fun. How's everybody doing? Great. Zupa. <laughs> yeah, right. The weather is awesome. They really do know how to put the rain in rainforest. It'll be tough slogging through the ladders. Any uh, words of advice on dealing with the rain? It's going to be slippery today. So slip means slow steps and... Uh, slippery means falling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it may happen for us all, including me. Oh, whoa, son of a... It's only our fifth day out here, and Mark is walking like he's been doing it all his life. All right. Whoa, son of a... Oh, yeah, Mark says hi. You know how you always said, when things look down, don't hang your head? Well, you're right. Now things are really looking up. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Actually, Mom, it's really not that good. One more. Before the next hundred. You know, Mom, today both our cameras broke down. Everyone's mad at each other. I'm soaked through to my underoos. But I know one day we'll all look back on this and laugh. Your son, Jeffrey, the cameraman. You know what? I don't know. It's <laughs> oh, now you're nothing to say. I know, I don't. I don't. This, this is what happens when the trail breaks you. It was beautiful weather. The group that was camping beside us now wants to hike the last two days in one just to end their misery. Oh man, it was brutal. And the wet. The wet, I just can't handle the wet. You know on this trail, where your mind goes, your feet will follow. Now how do I get back up? You tell yourself it's bad, then it is. And you know what's bugged me more than anything out here? Mud. The people who want to tell me the tricky part. just how bad it's going to get. Every day you spend here, you're looking forward to harder stuff. I'm not sure why people want to tell me that. But you get the big <laughs> set of ladders. Is that right? Yeah. You do have the you, hard way. Yeah. And it takes so much joy in telling me how crappy it's going to get. It's 30 stories. Straight up. <laughs> 30 stories. Think about that. Just when I'm feeling my lowest, Shannon reminds me we're out here doing this because it's hard. I think that's part of it. It's, it's to try and challenge yourself and still stay positive 
and enjoy your surroundings without being too frustrated because I just think that there's so many people that um, aren't able to do this type of trip and I just feel lucky and proud that I've been able to make it this far. You know, I don't think we um, discover ourselves out here. I don't think we find a new inner self out here. I think what happens is that in many ways we accentuate who we are out on this trail. We all need a helping hand. I've been lifted out of the mud. I've been helped oh. with words of encouragement when I have been down. And that's what's got me through six days so far on this trail. Not the other people. And when we got to camp that night, I discovered the Get the Hell Out of Here gang from this morning didn't. Not only are they here, but they're <laughs> laughing. But you were miserable. Sorry. No, we're not now. <laughs> you don't get a true West Coast Trail experience if it's dry the whole time. You have to experience the rain. You have to experience the mud. Otherwise, it's the West Coast Trail. The West Coast Trail. Yeah. You shared yeah. your worst day with See, your best yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And what a great time and it like was. Here. After pushing our limits for 70K along this trail, we know we can do this. And that makes you feel like you can do anything. The lesson we share? Well, I think our theme song says it best. I was singing Journey too. What song were you guys singing? We were singing, uh... What's the name of that song? Like, don't stop believing. <laughs> don't stop believing, that's right. I can't believe it. In times of strife and yeah. searching for inner strength, that's we right. found Journey. <laughs> okay. Last leg. And it starts straight up. Oh, man. But on day seven, something gives us that adrenaline kick. It's all uphill. For the love of God. It's called FLS, finish line syndrome. Hey, everybody needs to touch the uh, 5K marker for good luck. <laughs> As my journey comes to an end, I run into people just starting theirs. I could smell clean on them and see their wide-eyed optimism turn to fear when they saw us. Sweaty, dirty, drained. If I try anything like this, how about you? First time I've ever tried anything like this. Wow. Anything I'll make close it then. to it. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. Yeah, exciting time. I think back to what everyone had said along the way, of whatever was motivating them to start the West Coast Trail. People in our group, people we met along the way. And I really think that the biggest challenge of the West Coast Trail isn't finishing it. The biggest challenge of the West Coast Trail is starting it. At the time, it was all about one foot in front of the other. But looking back on the adventure, now I look up and I see why people do these things. Today I carry no bags, just memories. Hindsight. It's a pretty thing, isn't it? Thank you.